So providing the standardized protocol for device management is really important. I think the first main reason is the one you just alluded to, right? It allows enterprises to create multiple IoT solutions using the same device management protocol. I mean, what would be a good example? Uh, even, even an automotive manufacturer, right? This kind of manufacturer is going to be, you know, building cars, right? And, and layering IoT solutions into the cars. And those solutions would be um, anything that includes sort of infotainment and engine diagnostics and emergency call, right? There's three solutions right there. But, but that same automotive manufacturer who is offering a connected product in the market also is probably using uh, connected solutions inside its factory, right? For factory automation, for uh, warehousing and logistics, um, for um, various machine learning applications, probably on some of the equipment in its factory, right? So there are the myriad solutions um, that a single enterprise, in this case, an automotive manufacturer, would want to be able to launch using the same device management protocol. I think the second um, thing to keep in mind why these standardized protocol for device management are so important, and, and it, yeah, honestly, Greg touched on this a lot today, is that the, that other legacy type protocols only solve 50% of the problem, right? So if you're only solving the issue associated with, with messaging and sort of how messages are transferred um, from device to platform, you're really only solving 50% of the problem. Right, you're missing that that ever critical part um, of of device management as well. Right, right. I, I think you also have some specifics you wanna you wanna offer uh, insight to this audience today. I hope this is the right slide for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I, I, you know, Lightweight end to end provides this kind of standard protocol for device management at scale. Right, that, and, and that standardized bit is the important part, right? It allows a developer to specify the most important device management aspects from day zero. I mean, so often um, we find that um, an enterprise will create an IoT solution as a, as a proof of concept. It'll work really well, right? For one or two devices, you can manage one or two devices without, you know, a standardized protocol, no problem, right? However, as soon as you take that POC and try to scale it up, one learns very quickly, as Greg pointed out, uh, that you're going to run into problems uh, uh, with device management if you don't have a way to uh, 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 standardize the protocol um, and be able to manage things then at scale, right? So designing that device management aspect from day zero right from the point of, of planning out the poc is really really important don't don't wait until later um uh to to alight on a, on a standardized protocol for for your device management aspects secondly uh and related is ensuring that the iot solution performs well in the poc environment and the production environment um, the environments are really different um you know planning ahead is the most in, in, most important part and then picking a both a protocol and a platform that can support um, sort of the, the, the at, at scale deployment is really important. Offer, um, lightweight, man, lightweight MTEM also offers this standardized type protocol with extensibility for use case specific features. I think of it as sort of following the 80-20 rule, right? Whereas lightweight MTEM provides the structure and the, the structure with its objects um, approach Right, so you can you can solve really eighty percent of your requirements with 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 that object based approach, right, and and make all the specifications you need. However, at the same time, probably there's twenty percent of every IoT solution that requires a little bit of flexibility and needs some things um, that will be added on top of of um, um, the base structure. Right. And, and once again, lightweight end to end provides that ability to add additional flexibility with some custom objects. Very good. You know, this is uh, pretty obvious to me just in the last 40 minutes, the, the three of us chatting here regarding uh, device management, uh, IoT device management and leveraging standards based protocol like lightweight end to end is so important. 
Well, you know, I've read uh, research notes uh, saying, you know, one of the biggest, uh, most overlooked area in the IoT uh, implementation is device management. And, uh, you know, the functionalities, the features I listed out at the very beginning of this webinar, and uh, companies are still overlooking them, not having a well thought through process device onboarding, interop testing, automation, you know, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna throw back at you, Steve. Why do you think that is? Why is device management is underinvested or overlooked? Or enterprise is just not quite spending the kind of uh, time and the money uh, in this area? Well, it's a good question, Will. You know, interestingly, I think three years ago, on, on, in, uh, we wrote at Mac Nation a white paper about this very topic, which is um, the idea that, that enterprises fixate on the concepts of analytics and data management and that sort of sexy stuff at the top of the stack. And they, they underinvest in device management. In fact, I, I think we have that white paper still on our website. It's free. You could probably go to our website and search for device management, data management, and it'll pop up. Um, and I, I think it happens probably because the people that are making decisions about device layer protocols and things to do with devices for an implementation are sometimes different from the people inside the enterprise making decisions about the platform and the applications layer. And, and there, because there's sort of a, um, maybe sometimes even a lack of communication. Um, the the folks that are thinking about sort of the data that's coming out, right, um, aren't also thinking about the device and vice versa. The people that are thinking about the device aren't thinking about the data. And so I think we end up with a situation where um, the device level characteristics are sort of put off to the side and not thought about, or sometimes even thought about as like plumbing. You know, it's not very exciting, but you know, if you have a house without plumbing, you, you kind of, you know, have a, a, a rough situation in your house. I, I, I like your I like I like your analogy here, uh, the plumbing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not as sexy as the top level. But also, uh, Steve, uh, sorry to uh, interrupt you there for a second. Uh, is the issue of uh, device management involves just every participant in the ecosystem. You got to work with device manufacturers, right? And that's the, I'd say, IoT endpoint who depends on a, a radio chipset from a chipset vendor. Uh, and then you turn into a module provider. Then you turn into a system integrator. And then you got to bring in, it's not just te technology anymore. IoT is not a technology. IoT is a service, it's a business, right? So you got to bring in product, your internally, your engineering side and your product management, your marketing, your business executives. So it involves more, more moving parts versus a old, you know, in the ERP days, you know, technology implementation. Would you agree with that? I, I would, Will. I mean, I think people underestimate how hard device management really is. It touches so many aspects of the entire IoT solution. And I think the, the, the difficulty of doing this right, not only at POC, but at scale, um, really separates sort of the wheat from the chaff, right? I mean, it, it's, it's hard to do and takes, takes some good work. And it's important to find the protocols and the platforms that really excel um, in these areas. But I got the good news, I think, today, that what I learned, you know, the last 45 minutes is that uh, help is on the way. We got a standard, industry standard, organized by a global organization, OMA Specworks, and uh, it's lightweight m 2 m and uh, there are uh, vendors out there supporting it and wholeheartedly. So I certainly learned a lot in the last 45 minutes, Steve and Greg. Thank you very much for your insights. Uh, I'm going to try to attempt to uh, summarize uh, what I learned, <laughs> what we covered today. And then we're going to open the floor, literally, <laughs> virtually open the floor for our audience to, to chat back with us. 
All right, so we covered in the last 45 minutes uh, three challenges in the scalable IoT device management area. So one, you know, a firmware over the air. Is what is uh, lightweight M to M can do from interoperability perspective, from supporting different scenarios of uh, file transfer, uh, file uploads, dynamic folder campaigns, so on and so forth. Then we moved on to cover the device types, right? Managing multiple device types, multiple technologies, and uh, multiple vendors to avoid a vendor uh, lock in to paint yourself into a corner. Give yourself the flexibility, you got a future proof. Literally, this is not a cliche anymore because everybody understand IoT is an evolving field. And with 5G, you know, uh, there's a lot of things. We're just at the cusp of, of, of it at the moment. So you, you do not want to paint yourself into a corner. A flexible, scalable, open platform standards based that's where you want to go that's what i learned from you folks here uh greg and steve third one uh, we covered the challenge is providing a standardized uh protocol right so uh that's uh, essentially covers uh, everything we've been discussing today 